the 718 cars, the Cayman and the Boxster, essentially are the Porsche Sacrilege mobiles. The 718 name comes from a 50s race car, with which Porsche won quite a few races, but essentially it's their way of saying, flat six is gone, flat force in. Having never driven a Porsche with a flat six engine, I don't really know what I'm missing out on. I obviously have to go ahead and find a way to drive one of the more classic Porsches. But for now, I'm not biased over here. The Carmine Red, the Miami Blue, the Lava Orange, they do cost two and a half grand, but they're well worth it though. The car goes from good looking to absolutely stunning. The build quality in here is plain awesome. And everything, even the stuff that you don't normally touch, is of very high quality. The seats are 18-way adjustable, and the seating position, especially in relation to the steering wheel, is absolutely bang on. And everything just falls into place perfectly. The cup holders, while it is an intelligent design, they don't hold the cups very well. I suppose you could make the argument that you don't put drinks in there while hooning, but ultimately though, if I'm driving on the Autobahn and there's an off-ramp, am I not gonna hoon? <laughs> Truck stop exit. This is how you do that. Like that we hit 250 indicated 260 that's a properly fast Autobahn car it's not quite Autobahn royalty you'll probably have to have a turbo s or something like that but it is really fast and really fun to drive on the Autobahn when you lift off the accelerator the throttle body actually stays open and it's just ignition and injection that gets cancelled out so you get better throttle response if you go back on the gas within two seconds two and a half grand and the turbo kicks in all the way to seven and a half grand and it's just so fast dude so mcpherson suspension we all learned is for econo boxes and that's essentially it but the box just got McPherson in all four corners, which made me wonder because the Porsche claims a 742 ring time, to which I first of all say on board or it didn't happen. But for argument's sake, let's just say 742 is the number. 742 is ridiculously fast. That's faster than a GT3 from 10 years ago or something. So when I called Porsche, I asked the guy, how is this even possible? He just said, we do things properly over here. That is such a Porsche thing to say, isn't it? This car has the optional limited slip differential that also uses torque vectoring. I don't know whether I actually feel the diff doing its thing. At least with my driving style, it's completely seamless. Truth be told though, that might as well be just natural chassis behavior of the Porsche Boxster. And, <laughs> come on! Are you serious? <laughs> the front brakes have been carried over from the 911 Carrera and they have such huge four piston calipers. The braking performance is astonishing. All right, I've come to conduct a little test. I don't want to ruin anybody's tires or anything like that. I just want to see because it says slip angle allowed. <laughs> yes, slip angle allowed. Definitely. <laughs> For those of you that like the drifty stuff, it's a mid-engine car. It's got a bunch of torque. I think you're going to be good. I'm not a drifter person, so I'm not going to conduct any additional tests. Nope. ESP stays in sport mode. <laughs> which is probably a good idea because I do get carried away rather easily. <laughs> <laughs>
if you leave it in normal, you do get a touch of body roll, but not much. I, however, prefer the car in sport mode because that is when you get really flat cornering and it just feels better to me. I just love the balance the Boxster gives you because it suits my driving style very well. It's not at all difficult to drive, but at the same time, it still remains very enjoyable to hoon because everything feels proper about cornering. Yeah, right there, that's, it felt like it pushed over two wheels, whereas sometimes it feels like it pushes over all four wheels. It essentially feels like an all-wheel drive system should feel, but it's not an all-wheel drive system. It's kind of crazy. You also have wider tires in the back, 265s in the back, 235s in the front. So that's gonna take out some of the oversteer. So it's 15 to one around dead center. So yeah, like this, you're not gonna kill yourself trying to drive straight while the speedometer reads 295. Just a bit of steering movement is gonna get you into the 12.4 to one ratio, very precise adjustments mid-corner with the slightest movement of the wheel <laughs> that is super cool in terms of feedback eh, not much you get a touch of it occasionally the ref matching works exactly the same each time you use it The bad thing about the ref matching though is it's connected to the modes that you can select. Meaning in normal, you can't have it at all. In sport, it's always on. Sport plus, always on. Oh wait, I wanted to try something. And now what's happening? Okay. Now they've gone down the BMW route, which is what they did for the M2. Which means if you turn off all the safety nets, you can actually ref match yourself in sport and sport plus. Die beats me I don't know it seems utterly stupid to me I don't understand why there isn't just an option where I can select yes please ref match or no please do not ref match the gearing I suppose second could be just a tad bit shorter shorter because 130 kph in second why I the shifter is mounted very close to the steering wheel so you're back to the wheel very very quickly and you can actually do this. That, dear manufacturers, is how that gets done. Whenever you shift, you just get this very positive feedback. There's a bit of a click, depending on how angry the engine is at the time. You can actually hear it, but you can definitely feel it. And there's just the right amount of a notch whenever you click it into gear. Gearbox, amazing. That's not bad, is it? I do enjoy the sounds the engine makes. Like I said, I am coming into this all new. I do, however, agree that it isn't overly special. Combine the sports exhaust with the engine note, though. Drop the top, and now you have a very cool sports car soundtrack. If you get a Boxster and you don't spec the sports exhaust, you, my friend, are an idiot. <laughs> as far as performance goes, make your pick, gearbox, engine, steering, all of that stuff, it's all just great. I do, however, understand that there is gonna be a mental barrier for people to spend 80, 90 grand on a four-cylinder sports car. To me, the Boxster is just a special car, period. I'm now gonna turn off the camera and just enjoy it a bit more before it goes back tomorrow. Laters. So I'm getting the sense that you liked that, but I've been thinking about something, having watched that piece and okay. having seen other 718 pieces. Okay. I think you're the first journalist that's, that's actually driven that car, 
that doesn't have Porsche experience. You're representing a large group of people that will come to Porsche for the first time when these cars already have four cylinders. Good point. Yeah. But I mean, there's, there's gonna be a mental barrier to put down, let's say a properly spec one is gonna run you, what, 80 grand for a four cylinder sports car. You're right. That's gonna, some people are gonna struggle with that. I However, suppose. but on the other end of the spectrum though, faster rules all. I mean, there, there is a segment yes. of people that just, if it's faster. It is by far the fastest 350 horse car I've ever driven, by far. The limits are ridiculously high, ridiculous. Yes, they are. I don't know that I've ever driven a car that you can go through corners at those speeds and, and you don't even realize. Yeah, the traction on that chassis is amazing, yeah. Yep. But wouldn't you want, I don't know, a bit more excitement where stuff happens within any sorts of same levels of speed? Which? I don't think it's boring at, you know, 30, 40, 50. I wouldn't say, man, what a drag. <laughs> you gotta go blazingly fast just to have fun everywhere you go. Although I do. I think you want this car back in your life. Oh, look, let me just, my wallet, let me, one quick look. <laughs> wallet aside, extra $35,000 in options aside, do you want this car back in your life? If I only had one car and it did not need to be a track car, yeah. the Boxster would be pretty special in California. But if you're not gonna track it and you live in a place where you can drop the top all the time, yeah, I see Boxster all day long. Like it's a hurricane outside, what should we do? Drive Clearly the put the top down and drive the Boxster. That's because now we get back to those lower speeds and it's more special to drive. We've all agreed that we like Porsches. All of us, everyone's stunned. Everyone's just amazed that we've actually shared that. <laughs> so I actually want to move on because we could be here for the next two hours oh, uh, yes, to good. what do you have in the pipeline? You got other fast stuff coming, don't you? Oh yeah. I have the Audi RS6 performance coming up, a 605 oh. horsepower station wagon. And we love that. wagons. There's gonna be some As fast speed automotive journalists, yeah. naturally, yeah. we There's love wagons. We're just supposed to like wagons. <laughs> but next up, next up is actually gonna be the Peugeot 308 GTI by Peugeot Sport. I was on the spa racetrack with the Peugeot. I know you were. Good times, good times. Well, thank you, man, for this 718 piece. Yeah, Great piece. You. Cool to see those drone shots in there too and the absolute right color. You couldn't be more right on that. So thanks for your work, man. See you all later. Bye-bye. Yeah.